Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is uh, Greatest Common Factor, or GCF. So this is uh, Module uh, 8.1, you guys, and this is Part 1, and we're straying away from the book a little bit, so we appreciate the book, but we find uh, that it uh, we need to supplement it, and this is part of it where we're supplement supplementing. So it's, uh, factoring is a big unit in, in math, and so uh, we're just integrating a bunch of stuff into this integrated class. Anyway, so you can find all your groovy lessons at that website, MrMathBlog.com, and this is an integrated math uh, 2 class. So I don't know where you are on factoring, so I'm starting from the beginning. You guys list the factors of each number. So what numbers go into 10? 1 goes into 10, 2 does, 5 does, and 10 does. So those are all factors of of 10 okay and we're just thinking of the positive factors today okay so there are negative factors also so anyways 30 1 does 2 does 3 does 5 6 um, 10 does 15 does and 30 does okay 45 okay you guys get the idea there's the factors of 45 and then when you get a number like uh, 47 uh, we get uh, just 1 and 47. And so this is called a prime number, you guys. A prime number uh, only has factors of 1 and itself. Okay, all right. So now we're going to list the common factors of these pairs of numbers. So between 10 and 30. Okay, so the common factors, here's all the factors of 10 and 30. And the ones they have in common are all of those red guys right there. So 1, 2, 5, and 10. And that's all they have in common. So Everything that's a factor of 10 also is a factor of 30. All right, so how about this one? 6 and 9, okay? There's the factors of 6 and 9, so they have 1 and 3 in common, okay? So those are the common factors. All right, so remember, this lesson is called greatest common factor. So what's the greatest common factor? Well, this one would be the 10. This one would be the 3. So the GCF, or greatest common factor, would be the 3. All right, how about between 12 and 25? Okay, so there's the factors of 12 and the factors of 25. And the only thing they have in common is that 1 right there, okay? Even though they have some other factors, the only ones they have in common is uh, 1. All right, so now we're going to find the greatest common factors, okay, of 6 and 9. Okay, the biggest one is that 3. All right, and then... Uh, of these guys, okay, 6x squared yz squared, and then 9xy cubed. All right, so with the variables, you guys, and we take the smallest powers of the common factor. So they both share some x's and y's. This one doesn't have any z's, so we don't have a common z factor. So that's not going to be part of our, our GCF. Okay, between the, the 6 and the 9, we know it's 3. Okay, so it's 3, and we take the smallest group of x's. So this x and the smallest group of y's is this y. So it's 3xy. Okay, and there is no z on that because um, uh, this one doesn't have a z. It doesn't have one in common. All right, and then uh, what else do I have for you here? So um, we're going to find the GCF of the polynomials. Okay, so here we have 8x cubed minus 6x. All right, so just think of uh, just the 8x cubed and the 6x. Disregard the negative or the minus sign for right now, you guys. So we're just looking at the 8x cubed and the 6x. So the biggest number that goes into 8 and 6 is 2. And then the smallest group of x's is the x from the 6 right there. So the GCF is 2x. All right, how about this one? What goes into 4, 6, and 12? Well, 2 does. And the smallest group of x's comes from this one. So the GCF is 2x on that one, okay? All right, uh, all right. so now we're going to factor out the GCF of the polynomials. In the first few, I'm going to tell you what the GCF is because we have a worksheet, you guys, and I'm trying to mimic our worksheet on for our homework, you guys, as part of our supplementing in here. So um, the GCF of these guys is 4, so it tells us that it's 4 right here. So if we pull a, a this is 4x is 4 times x, and 12 is 4 times 3, so let's write it like that. So what we're going to do is pull the 4 out. We'll pull this blue 4 out and we'll be left with the x minus the 3. So when we pull that blue 4 out, we've now factored it out. Okay, we factored out the GCF of 4, so we'd be left with x minus 3. Okay, now factoring is the opposite of multiplying. A month ago, I would have said distribute this 4 through. You'd have done 4 times x and then 4 times 3 and it would have got us right where we started up here. So factoring is the opposite of multiplying or distributing for today. So 
here we go. So they're telling us that the GCF is 7Z. Now we'll find out, I most of the time won't tell you the GCF, but these first three I will. Okay, so 7Z squared. So let's write 28Z to the third as 7Z squared times something. And we'll write 35Z squared as 7Z squared times something. So here they are. So 7 times 4 gives us this 28 right there, and z squared times z gives us the z to the, the third. Here's 7z squared times 5 is 35z squared. So now we'll pull out the blue 7z squared, and we'll be left with 4z plus this 5 inside the parentheses right there, okay? And to check your answers, you just distribute that 7z squared. It should take you back up to this right there. All right, so that's our answer right there. All right, let's try one more where I give you the GCF here, you guys. All right, so let's rewrite these guys as 4x to the third. 4x to the third times what? Uh, 3x squared. 4x to the third times 4x, and then this is 4x to the third times 6. So when we pull out that 4x to the third, we'd be left with the 3x squared minus 4x plus 6, okay? Remember, if we redistributed this back through, we'd multiply that times that. It should get us that. 4x cubed times uh, 4x will give us this 16x to the fourth. And then this times this will give us the 24x to the third. Okay, so there we pulled out the 4x to the third. All right, now this one doesn't give you the GCF. So we got to determine what is the GCF of 7x to the fourth minus 21x. Okay, with the 7 and the 21, it's 7. And we take the smaller group of x's out. So the GCF is 7x. Okay, so when we pull that GCF of the 7x out, see, 7x to the fourth is 7x times x to the third. 21x is 7x times 3, so now we'll pull the blue 7x out, and we'll be left with this stuff, x to the third minus this 3 right there. All right, so there it is. We GCF'd out the 7x. Okay, here's the next one. All right, out of the 15, the 35, and the 50, 5 we can pull out, and uh, we can pull an x out of all of those, okay? So we'll pull a 5x out of all of those, okay? So here we go. All right, when we pull that blue 5x out, we'll be left with this stuff, 3x to the third minus 7x squared, and then uh, plus the 10 right there, okay? So there's our answer right there, okay? All right, uh, here we go. So now we have a common binomial factor right here. So they both have x plus 3 involved. So what we're going to do is pull out the blue x plus 3, okay, and it comes out as 1. We're going to pull out the x plus 3 out of this. We're left with this x. We'll pull out the x plus 3 out of this. We're left with the plus 5. So it's going to be x plus 3 times the leftover stuff, x plus 5. We pulled out these x plus 3s as 1, x plus 3, okay? All right, so let's try one more of those. I think we have one more of those, yeah. No, we got two more. I remember there's another one. Okay, so these guys have 3x minus 2. We're going to pull out the 3x minus 2, and we're left with 5x plus 1, okay? So it's 3x minus 2 times 5x plus 1. All right, and then if I foiled this out right here, 3x minus 2 times 5x plus 1, and distributed this 5x through and distributed this 1 through and combined like terms, we should get the same answer. All right, one more, you guys. So, okay, these guys have a 6x minus 5 in common. So when we pull out the 6x minus 5, we'll be left with 6x minus 5. So we have 6x minus 5 times 6x minus 5. It looks cleaner like that. So 6x minus 5 squared. All right, if you are in our class, we're going to be giving you that handout right there. And I do not have a an electronic copy, so I can't show that on here. So anyways, take care, you guys. Hope that makes sense.